Okay, let me introduce uh, the next speakers. Olga Gribova and Anastasia Ostromova, landscape designers from the Satsunamarchi School. They have quite a lot of awards. And uh, last year they were the Flower Gem winner in the Social Garden nomination. And uh, that's exactly what they're going to talk about. Yeah, the Social Garden, our journey, how we built it, the issues we run into and how we managed to overcome them. Okay, the first steps in the life of the social garden. A few words about ourselves. The temporary gardens before the Nova Zimla. So the first one was called the Shockwave, uh, Sadi and Ludi, 2017. Then again, uh, the child, Childhood Secret Garden. So all our ideas, uh, they are not only shoehorned into the space of the temporary garden. They further leave and uh, if you have a lot of area and give it some space to develop, then these ideas uh, further develop. One more product was the Flower Jam 2018. We made it to the finals and uh, with the backdrop of this product, we had the concept of the Flow Park, which uh, received uh, the silver medal at the national contest. And the garden we are going to talk about will be Nova Zimlia, or the New World uh, Social Project in the Spiransky Hospital. We implemented last year, and this became our favorite project. And hopefully you'll like it as well. Those who were close to this, close to this garden, were full of emotions and impressions. So the garden is still generating joy, and I hope that with the next year, it will become even more flourishing and uh, more colorful. We run into a number of issues, the permanent and the temporary garden. So the social project is a garden for at least two or three years. And if uh, it is possible, we can maintain it for five years. The major issues, how to select the construction materials to survive this time to have proper planting density and uh, so that uh, sm some small adjustments could be made uh, year on year without any major investment needed. Here is the garden. We saw there are the happy faces of parents and children and the doctors who enjoyed the fact that the patients came from the street uh, with a happy smile on their face. This garden became a magnet, especially for the evening and night time. Here you can see the major requirements for a social project. Number one, the topic should be positive. Then, the spaces should be designed in such a way as to make it also positive and with a meaning. The wow effect should be there so that people should like to come back. It should be also interactive, and it should be um, also neat. It should be um, technologically sound. Uh, it should be um, stress resistant, clean, and resistant to impact. A few words about these topics. 
So the positive topic is uh, having rest. So in our case, it's uh, associated with uh, traveling and having rest, going to the um, southern banks. So here are some exotic plants and shapes. The space solution. We managed to find a good way to match our garden with the location. So with this perspective, the garden became even more impactful. The space solution. Please show the video. When we designed this, we understood that volumes are important, the external and the internal ones, so that you can see a fold here and some geological elements. The wow effect, so that people want to come back. The thing which struck people as surprising was this uh, cactus uh, element, the new world idea. And uh, at night, uh, it uh, caused a lot of excitement. The second thing is the wow effect uh, in the plants. You can see a lot of bright response. What I mean is that we can pick a good combination of all the elements. The important thing was compatibility between the plants and uh, with the topic. So all the plants uh, should be in, in line with the topic. So we had uh, the juniper tree, we had the perennials, and uh, we also had uh, spindle trees. So these are the southern ideas of positive emotions, uh, which were conveyed through the plants. It should be beautiful, and it should change with seasons. This way we managed to plant everything quite tightly. So if we properly manage the variety of plants and trees and, and spurs, so all this was uh, converged into this bright impression. So in June, we had uh, the first plants uh, blooming. So you can see them here. And this looks like uh, cactus uh, flowers. And uh, the milfoil, as you can see, came in July, and it was very intensive and aggressive. Then we had uh, Zenium and uh, Rebecca in August and September. You can see the color spreading. So this is uh, cornflower. You can see the flowers spreading and uh, giving different shades and hues of uh, color. We also wanted to use flowers which were kind of uh, outstanding. So Cleoma, which is the giant spider plant, was a one-year plant and it was a good match uh, with the overall idea of the garden. It was in a good association with um, the cactus. And uh, Knifonia was uh, also quite bright uh, with its spikes. And uh, another important uh, element uh, is uh, the agave plant, uh, which is uh, part and parcel of the southern recreational areas. The fourth parameter to make this uh, demanding, or to make it uh, in demand, is uh, interactive. And we had uh, different interactive areas. Now we split it into passive and active interactive elements. 
we had both. And this is important for those who are going to design social gardens in the future. Okay. The passive interactive elements, they are quite difficult to build. They require safety considerations, but they don't need any maintenance. For us, so number one, these were cactuses, the selfie spots, and the climbing spots. A collection of minerals. We also had um, cross-section of uh, soil. We had another interesting game called Find the Pipe. And also we had uh, this uh, plant labels. And the active interactive elements are quite difficult to build and maintain. And for us, uh, these were the colored um, filling with uh, so colored filling. And uh, we had this game of mixing. This is good for developing your um, fingers and overall for your brain development. And all the kids uh, were going here, so this became a magnet for kids who were mixing things. And uh, there is a flip side to this. To let this uh, happen, someone has to bring it back to order and to split these different uh, fillings uh, by uh, size and color. We had uh, three meshes, and uh, in, we, um, you know, we became masters of um, filtering this into groups. Well, there was a funny story. Uh, there was a granny walking her uh, grandchild, uh, and I was sieving through these cuttings, and they were watching me quite carefully. And then, then this granny uh, told her grandson, "Don't mix uh, uh, differently colored sand." See. So, uh, uh, when it started raining, uh, mixing colored sand was no longer possible, but kids still do that because, you know, they play around both uh, inside the garden, on the benches, uh, in the flower beds, and even in the tents. Uh, oftentimes, they would bring uh, sand, colored sand, into the tents. Let's move on. As for uh, taking things away, since this garden is on the premises of, of a hospital and people would read books while staying in hospital, uh, we decided to uh, use these bookmarks as things that they can actually take away from the garden. In the winter time, uh, we uh, would uh, spread out uh, uh, bookmarks uh, uh, showing different minerals. and. Uh, uh, Another set of uh, bookmarks was prepared for spring. So after each and every visit, uh, we would uh, leave 10 to 15 bookmarks per bench. And uh, the fifth bullet is neatness. Uh, you know, uh, all the previous speakers touched upon the fact that gardens should be neat and clean. And teamwork in this regard is really important because it's the entire team that takes part in deploying the garden. And that includes uh, landscape, a landscape designer, the construction company representative, tree nursery people, uh, people who actually plant uh, all the trees and flowers around, and the organizers, of course. So like I said, it takes joint efforts by all these people uh, to uh, make a lasting impression uh, that the garden creates throughout its life cycle. And in our case, so the life cycle of a garden equals to two to three years. Uh, well, we're going to have to live and see what happens after the winter is over, but I really hope that uh, the garden will survive this winter. As for the uh, wow effect, if you are a uh, landscape designer practitioner, you understand perfectly well that it takes systematic maintenance and care uh, to uh, enable a garden to survive. Uh, if you are careless, uh, the effect would be just the opposite. So at least once a week, we would visit the garden and uh, 
we would spend our time caring about plants. We would cut down uh, uh, flowers uh, that uh, no longer blossomed. We would weed out the weeds. Uh, then we would just clean the garden. We would uh, wipe down the uh, benches, the horizontal sur uh, surfaces, and uh, you know, uh, sieve the colored sand. It would take us two to three hours to do that. Keep in mind that uh, uh, some uh, landscape designers uh, cannot afford to do that because some of them are just based abroad uh, and it, it's next to impossible for them to come and care for their gardens. This is the way it looked before uh, snowstorms. Actually, uh, this, that was uh, after the uh, gavies were removed. Yeah, and uh, well, actually, we would like to thank the hospital uh, authorities because they actually uh, allocated uh, an inside space for the uh, uh, gavis uh, to be uh, placed in. We recently visited them, by the way. What's so funny? Did I miss on a joke? Is it a private joke or or what? Well, I guess uh, uh, experts, uh, expert council is no longer, uh, uh, well, is not going to assess our garden and uh, grade it, but uh, people still visit it. And since this garden has become part and parcel of the hospital premises, it's an exotic, a unique space, but nevertheless, it is still part of the hospital premises. Therefore, we took a decision to keep on caring about uh, this garden and maintaining it. Uh, that's in our interests as well. And uh, this way, it's going to stay uh, as designed. And in conclusion, I just wanted to mention that uh, the most important takeaways are as follows. A social garden means that you have to bear the responsibility. Uh, and uh, now I'm going to list uh, the stakeholders who, who can actually share this responsibility. It's not uh, truth revealed. It's just some food for thought. If you plan to take part in this nomination, uh, you have to focus on that as well. So first and foremost, it includes uh, the stakeholders include designers because, you know, designers, landscape designers design the garden and they have to maintain it. Then the entity for which uh, you actually create the garden, the entity should shoulder part of the responsibility. And well, last but not least, uh, flower gem. Uh, you, you know, it's not an exhaustive list, but nevertheless. Before you start designing, uh, before we started designing a social garden, we actually start looking through the specification requirements to better understand what the organizers actually meant by a social garden. We know what a show garden is all about. We know what uh, a permanent garden should be all about. But uh, like I said, we had to uh, closely analyze the specification requirements uh, to better understand what a social garden uh, should look like. And it turned out that uh, there, were, there was uh, no description to this effect. Uh, maybe uh, mentors in the jury uh, the board of experts uh, should uh, come up uh, with uh, a specified set of uh, specification requirements to be met by the social gardens. I don't know, maybe uh, they might come up uh, with uh, certain criteria that uh, other nominees would have to meet. And last but not least, we should come up with a procedure or a guideline to maintain uh, social gardens, both during the flower fest and after it's over. That brings us to the end of our presentation, and I hope you liked us, uh, you liked uh, our presentation. On